Hey everyone, I'm Ishno, I'm a data scientist. In this video, I'm going to teach you the idea behind chi square in a fun way, and you will learn how to do feature selection using chi square. Let's see. When do we need chi square? Well, if the independent variables are categorical and the dependent variable is also categorical and we want to know whether there is any relationship between independent and dependent variable, then we have to use chi square. Let's say we want to know whether there is any relationship between gender and result. Let's see how chi square can help us in this scenario. This is the actual values which we have. In chi square, we call it as observed values. In any statistical analysis, the very first step will be to formulate the hypothesis. So let's formulate the hypothesis. Here the null hypothesis will be there is no relationship between gender and result. And the alternative hypothesis will be there is a relationship between gender and result. Now let's focus on observed values. By looking at this table, we can confidently say that there is a relationship between gender and result. Because male students are more likely to get pass mark whereas female students are more likely to get fail mark. Obviously, we can say gender makes difference in results. But how we are able to say that? Because the values are not evenly distributed. That is why we can say that there is a relationship between gender and result. Which means if the values are evenly distributed, then there is no relationship between variables. It makes sense, right? If the values are not evenly distributed, which indicates that there is a relationship between gender and result. Then if the values are evenly distributed, obviously which indicates that there is no relationship between variables. Let me show you what do I mean by that. Let's try to create a new table where all the values will be evenly distributed. These evenly distributed values are called expected values. The idea is if we know how the table would look like if there is no relationship between gender and result, then simply we can compare any table with this table and we can make decision. For example, if they are similar to each other, then there is no relationship between gender and result. Or if they are not similar to each other, then there is a relationship between gender and result. This is the beautiful idea behind chi square. Guys, just think in this way. If you know how a tiger would look like, then simply you can look at any animal and you can say whether it is a tiger or not. This is the same idea which is used in chi square. If you know how the table would look like if there is no relationship between gender and result, then simply we can compare this table with other table and we can say whether there is a relationship between two variables or not. For that, we need these expected values. So how do we calculate these expected values? Well, let me show you how to calculate expected values with a simple example. Look at this example. Here we have 40 students. Out of 40, 20 of them are male and 20 of them are female. Out of 20 male students, all 20 male students are getting pass mark. But out of 20 female students, none of them are getting pass mark. Obviously, in this case, gender makes difference in result. Also, if you look at the values, they are not evenly distributed, which means we can say that there is a relationship between gender and result. But how the table would look like if there is no relationship between gender and result in this case? Obviously, the values will be evenly distributed. For example, if there are 20 male students, out of 20, 10 of them should get pass mark and 10 of them should get fail mark. Similarly, if there are 20 female students, 10 of them should get pass mark as well as 10 of them should get fail mark. Then only we can say there is no relationship between gender and result. Now if you look at the values, they are evenly distributed. Which means both male and female students are equally getting pass as well as fail marks. So there is no relationship between gender and result. But how to calculate these expected values? Well, there is a trick. If you multiply row total by column total and divide it by grand total, you will get the expected values. For example, this value can be obtained by multiplying its row total by column total and divided by grand total. This is how we can calculate expected values. Now let's go back to our actual problem and let's calculate expected values. In this case, these are the expected values. 
Now simply we can compare these two tables and we can say if the observed values are close to expected values then there is no relationship between gender and result or if the observed values are very far from expected values then there is a relationship between gender and result. But how much difference must be there between observed and expected values to make this decision? Also how to quantify the difference between observed and expected values? That is where chi square comes in picture. The formula is sum of observed minus expected whole square divided by expected. Now let's calculate chi square by substituting the values in the formula. In this case the chi square value will be 11.42. After calculating chi square value we have to calculate degrees of freedom. In chi square the degrees of freedom will be number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. In this case the degrees of freedom will be 1. After calculating chi square and degrees of freedom, we have to refer the chi square table. Here, we have to get the critical value for 1 degrees of freedom with 95% confidence interval. In this case, the critical value is 3.84. After getting the critical value, we have to refer the chi square distribution. Let's say the critical value approximately comes here, then everything right to this line will be my rejection region. And let's see where the chi square value comes. It comes approximately here. As a rule of thumb, if the chi square value is greater than the critical value, then straight away we can reject the null hypothesis and we can conclude that there is a relationship between gender and result. Or if the chi square value is lesser than the critical value, then we can't reject the null hypothesis. In such a cases, we can conclude that there is no relationship between gender and result. But in this case, the chi square value is greater than the critical value. So we can conclude that there is a relationship between gender and result. Generally, people take decision based on probability value. If you don't know what is probability value, which is nothing but the total area which is right after this particular point, which is 11.42. In this case, the total area is very very small after this point. That is why the probability is also very very small. In statistics, if the p-value is lesser than 0 0.0 pi, then we can reject the null hypothesis and we can conclude that there is a relationship between two variables. Or if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then we can't reject the null hypothesis. In such a cases, we can conclude that there is no relationship between two variables. But in this case, the p-value is lesser than 0 0.05. Pi. So we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is a relationship between gender and result. So this feature is very very important. So we can use this feature to build a machine learning model. That's it. That's all about chi-square.